G'day cadets, how you going? Welcome to the Stressful Opinion. In today's video, console cheats are back. Oh! Let's get into it. Not too long ago, there was a certain program that was specifically for console to enable you to have cheats. Now, this company was supposedly shut down, but there is a new boy on the block and it goes by the name of Eagle Eye Aiming. And there is a dedicated Discord server for this program, which it is being sold through, and it integrates with the Titan 2, enabling you to have cheats on your console. Now, this is some pretty serious stuff, and it enables every Tom, Dick, and Scrub who has a console out there to get an unfair advantage. Now, I know when the other company was shut down, down, a lot of people thought that's where it was going to end, but that is pretty naive. When you have thousands upon thousands of developers out there and intelligent people all looking to make money, they're going to continue where that other company left off. And this is where we're at now with Eagle Eye Aiming. So now let's take a look at all the settings that are available for all the console players to use. And keep a close eye on the auto aim tracking options. As you can see, that is some pretty advanced software for console enabling you to get an unfair advantage and basically cheat in games such as Warzone, PUBG, and Apex Legends. But now let's take a look at the auto aim slash tracking option live in action. Hello, I'm going to show you how to use aim assisted tracking and how to adjust their settings and what their meaning are. First of all, I've restored my defaults and enabled use computer vision and enabled aim assisted tracking. Aim assisted tracking. Um, so we'll be sat with the default settings, which is okay with me. So I'm going to save and run this. I'm going to stop and start computer vision. And we're going to demonstrate to you how that looks for me using a controller on Xbox. This is my default, so I move left to right, you can see it's quite a little too slow actually. So we can um, make adjustments based off that. It's good, to be honest, actually it's pretty good. You see that it needs a slight correction. You see it doesn't quite make it all the way with that swing. So in that case, if we stopped CV, Let's see here, so I want to apply more correction. So I'm going to do 150. I'm going to specify the distance the same. And the speed, I'm actually going to increase this to 110. And I'm okay with that. Run that again. Let's see what results we get this time. Ah, there's a guy behind it and it's picking up his name tag. That's looking a lot better. Oh, go away. I see how snappy that was. That was actually nice. It's freaking out a bit now. But otherwise, there's too many name flags going on. Let's switch to object detection. That might be a little better. Yeah, of course, some guy would just come straight in then. Yeah, you're perfect. Just stand still. That's looking good to me. 
It's looking great. I'm happy with that. Um, of course, with aim assisted tracking, it's not perfect based on the technology that it's using. You're not going to obviously get the PC-like aimbot type of reaction that you'd expect. Um, so you have to remember that. And of course, we have these additional settings that I've added down here. One you may be familiar with, otherwise it's called a stop tracking on manual input. Basically, if you enable this, when your input reaches over 80 um, on the aim stick or with your mouse, then it will stop tracking. So to demonstrate this, I'll just put it on quite low. Actually, I'll put it on, I'll leave it at 80. Push OK, stop, and start. What this essentially allows us to do is when I'm aiming at an enemy, for example, if I push all the way on the right stick, the aim stick, um, it breaks out of the tracking. It otherwise never did that before. It would keep you held in the tracking. Um, so that essentially is what that that does. And of course, you can slide use a slider here to uh, sorry use a slider here to adjust when that occurs or not. At restrict manual movement while tracking is enabled by default and it's set to one percent. Um, this allows you to make smaller adjustments. So if I push put this to forty five percent, so I should be able to move my um, aim stick or mouse, I guess, um, by 45% while still tracking. If I save and run that, and then stop and restart CV, see that in action. It's a little difficult because of these running out, so we'll use object. So you can kind of, I'm still able to move my stick. It obviously corrects it straight straight away, but I'm still able to make mine. If I held on to the stick, like in a position, you can see I can make small adjustments. This is a terrible example because of these enemies running. That's better. So if I hold down a little bit, so you can make these micro adjustments while tracking left and right. If I just, so you can see it's got that nice bounce to it. That's me just pushing left, right, left, right on my aim stick, by the way. So that's me allowed to make sense. Obviously, I've still got that option to break out of the tracking. As you can see, once I reach that threshold, it exits the tracking. So it's very sticky. Um, and I believe that's it for all the settings. For aim assisted tracking, yep, that's it. So that's all the new aim assist um, tracking settings. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, I have to admit, this individual has put a lot of work into this, but at the end of the day, this is illegal. This is cheating for console players. And as machine learning, AI, coding languages improve and technology moves forward, this is only going to make this software a lot better, more advanced, more accessible to the general public in regards to console users. And it will get to the point where literally every first person shooter game will be absolutely unplayable. And this is why there needs to be an anti-cheat program for console that detects third party software. For example, the Cronus Zen, right? There needs to be something put into place now because soon this is going to blow up and every developer is going to be looking to improve this sort of technology and sell these types of cheats to the general public. But what do you guys reckon? Is this the beginning of the end for console gaming? Or do you believe that console manufacturers can develop an anti-cheat that detects third-party devices with scripts enabling users to cheat? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, bye for now. Now get out of here, scrubs.